contempt for the con men, compassion for the cons. It's a saying in British English. Now, about contempt, you shouldn't have contempt towards any human being because that's a form of aversion that will trap you in bitterness and negativity. I don't care how contemptuous they are. But, so let me rephrase it. It should be contempt for the, what the con man did and compassion for the cons who have suffered. That's how, it, that's how it should be. That's a better, better way to phrase it. But anyway, I'm not here to discuss about how to phrase English things. I'm here to point out something to you. Not everyone that has been conned is innocent. I'm not talking about scams over here. I already explained what a scam is. A scam is, is when you are tricked to pay for something, or to, uh, but you don't get what you've paid for. But they took advantage of you financially. That is a scam. And if they do it in a direct way, in a swift way, it's a swindle. So I already explained what a, what a scam is. I'm talking about cons in this video. What is a con? A con is when someone tricks you to invest in something that will not benefit you in the long run. So, a con does not have to imply that someone is actively giving you misinformation or disinformation. A con is simply someone strongly suggesting to you that this is the best option for you, even though it's obviously not. But in that situation, due to lack of knowledge on your part, and it's not your fault you lack the knowledge, simply knowledge you don't have or you're not supposed to have, because of that, you end up agreeing with them, and before you know it, they take advantage of you, and they prevent a better outcome from happening to you, because a con is something personal. In a con, the con man or con woman wants to withhold something good from you. They want to prevent a better future for you, so they want to keep you in their misery. That's what the con is. So, let's say that you were dating this guy and uh, your mother got upset because your mother is divorced and she only had horrible men in her life. But you have this decent man she sees you with. But because she wants, someone, wants to blame someone for the misfortunes in her life, she doesn't want to see her daughter having a better life than hers because that will be too confronting for her. So now, she... Uh, she tells her daughter, look, this man is a decent man, but hey, in this life you need to have a man that earns more money, or this man has his issues, and can it be that this man has issues, but hey, who in this world has no issues? So the daughter will trust the mother, was strong bond with the mother, lives with the mother, and she drops that guy, and she ends up with a worse guy. Now, she truly believed that she did the right thing by dumping that one guy, because the guy had so-called that issues. But she had no idea that her mother tricked her into doing that because the mother didn't want her to have a better sex life than she had. So, she has been conned. In this case, the phrase, content for the con woman, content for the con is applicable. But you should rephrase it to, be, to let it be more Christ-like. But here's the thing. Not everyone that's conned is innocent. In the example I just gave unto you, the daughter was innocent. She was a, a young woman with good intentions, with no evil longing in her. And she was, she was conned by her abusive mother. In that case, the con is innocent, and that makes it more grievous what the con woman in this case did. But what if you have a bunch of people who are narcissistic in the sense that they don't want to deal with issues in life. They just want to be left alone all the time, but they don't expect the community to work for them. And one day, there are issues in the, in the community. There's crime, there's a lot, a lot of people who claim to be sexually molested, and now all those people in the community don't want to deal with anything. They just want to be left alone, left alone. Then one day, you have this um, politician coming up, talking about dealing uh, with all the crime, with a zero tolerance policy. Now, the people in that community, they've been confronted with the crime that happened to the community. 
So they finally think, oh, finally, someone is dealing with it, then we are left alone. So they vote for this politician. They become supporters of this politician. A few years later, the crime has increased five times in the community. Now, here's the deal. Ten years ago, when they supported the politician, uh, they began to lock up a lot of the young men. They were caught with minor offenses. For a minor offense, you would get a week or two in jail. You have to pay a fine or do community service, and that's it. But due to the zero tolerance policy, those men, instead of having two weeks in jail or doing community service, they ended up five years in prison or more. A lot of those young men just fought the children. So the children grew up the first years without their dad. Or some of them already had children who were five, six, seven years old, and now their dads were in prison. This traumatized the children. And now those children, this trauma, brought this trauma draw them to other traumatized young people and they began to escalate together so now you have an increase in crime what caused increase in crime the zero tolerance policy and by the way those men who went to jail for minor offenses now they're out of jail they have a criminal record now they have more difficulty getting a job so what happens a lot of them go to informal ways to get money because they need to find some income, because they're not allowed on welfare. So what do they do? Do they have to die? Do they, their, their relatives can't, can't support them always. So now they've pushed people more into criminality. But how, this, is, so this whole situation of the criminality increasing five times is the fault of who? Is it the con man, the politician, or is it the public that they don't want to face reality? If the public faced the, the, the low crime that was going on in their community, it would have been solved. But because they won't be left alone, they kept the crime going. And now someone came with some fake promise, and because the fake promise uh, triggered the relief seeking, they went all in on it. That politician didn't even ask them to support them that much, but they did, because they wanted to get rid of hearing about crime around them. And uh, zero tolerance policy, it sounded promising, so they uh, voted for the guy. They demanded the zero tolerance policy, and they supported it any time the police uh, would uh, arrest people and when they got a long sentence. They didn't look at the bigger picture, realize what mean, and this may work backwards for us, or this may have some serious side effects coming with it. They just want to be left alone. And now that 10 years later, the crime has increased fivefold, now the same public as well as some of the younger people who are now older, they are complaining. But hold on a minute. They were the ones demanding a zero tolerance, tolerance policy, right? They were the ones who didn't want to look at the big picture. They're the ones who don't want, want to be bothered by what's going on, going on in their community, weren't they? So they were conned by that politician. But the con was not as if they were holy, righteous people who were tricked by Satan. No. They were bad people who were taken advantage of by another bad individual. And yes, they were conned, but they're not innocent. They're guilty. They're guilty for being neglectful of their community. The politician only took advantage of their neglect that they were enacting on their own community. So, when someone has been conned, always check them to see what it is you're dealing with. Just because someone has been conned and now they have to deal with the consequences doesn't mean they're, they're innocent. Some people, they know very well that what's being promised to them doesn't add up. They still take it because the alternative is, is to deal with the situation as it is. So from the start, they knew something was off with the deal or they knew something was off with what, it, what the individual was saying, or they knew that something was off with a quote-unquote solution, but they didn't want to do the effort to self-reflect and to deal with the situation. So they got along with the quick fix. And now that the quick fix is backfires on them, now suddenly they're pointing at the con man and con woman. Now the con man or con woman, or better the con artist, is to blame, of course. But why did they went along so easily with it? Why didn't they examine it? That is on them. Listen, a lot of people out there are cons on a regular basis because they never want to look in the mirror and, and, and become better. So because they resist self-reflection, 
because they resist facing reality, because they resist anyone holding them accountable. That's why they've set themselves up to be cut. If anyone cuts them, they're wrong and pathetic for taking, opp for taking opportunity of their own bad behavior. But the bad behavior of those people made it easy for them to be cut. And here's the thing, if you're not interested in the truth and you're not interested in solutions, then the only thing you're actually interested in are lies to make you feel good. So they already embrace the dark side. So if someone embraces the dark side and a con man or con woman takes advantage of it, the con man or con woman are wrong. But if the individual didn't choose the dark side, the con man or con woman wouldn't have been able to exploit them and hinder them so easily. So. Don't sabotage yourself by chasing relief all the time. Be open for self-reflection and be open for long-term solutions. This is for now. Keep it in agreement with Christ and be at peace.